Hey y'all, it's me, Mr. G, Alton Elementary Librarian. Uh, this one particularly goes out to uh, my other Mission CISD librarians today. I wanted to make kind of a little tutorial uh, today uh, be, uh, for y'all uh, about our 3D printers, a good old MakerBot sketch edition. Um, they're really a pretty neat little tool and I finally decided to take a look at it. I'm not sure how many of you have, but uh, you can make neat little, uh, a little hard to see, little 3D models here. I've got a little Pikachu uh, thing that I made yesterday. Um, but to get to this point, it, it took me, you know, most of the day to, to troubleshoot and figure out what I was doing. So I just wanted to help you all out and put something together to uh, show you how to do it. So let's take a look. All right, here's the MakerBot sketch. It's pretty easy to set up. First of all, you know, make sure you plug it in. There's also a space for an ethernet cable. You're gonna want to plug that in there to the wall, to the internet. And of course the power plug. You'll find it actually comes with two different power plugs. Make sure you got the right one. There's another one that's like a European one or something like that. Obviously not our plug style. So plug in the right one. Uh, after that, it should have come with some, you know, instructions. Just follow that up. And once you turn it on, it's going to prompt you with the instructions too. First of all, I'll ask for the firmware update. And that you, you can just go download and it'll tell you the site right here on the little screen. And then just bring it back and install it. And I'll show you how to do that just right now. All right. So after the MakerBot prompts you to download the, the update, uh, you can do so by going to that website, the makerbot.com slash sketch FW. It's gonna take you here, or you're just gonna update, uh, download the little update here. So click the link and you can save it right in one of those mini USBs that they gave you. As you can see, I've already saved it here. So um, click, let's pretend I saved it again. Uh, one thing you do wanna make sure you do is unzip this file. So if I right click here, I can do extract all, and that's going to give me this screen here. I can just press extract. I don't need to change the folder. It's just going to continue saving it to the same area in the USB. And now you'll have a folder that's not a zip one. And that's important so that the MakerBot can actually uh, access those files. All right, after you download the new heart, the new software, just plug it into this USB spot and you're going to have to then turn the thing on and off. Of course, there's the button right there and it'll start installing it right away there. And then you might have to restart it again one more time. All right. Now you've got the MakerBot all set up, the firmware's updated. How are you actually going to do some printing? Uh, well, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your MakerBot is plugged into the internet the easiest way is just to plug in an ethernet uh, cable. I know they didn't want us using the internet to update the MakerBot, but honestly, after a lot of trial and error, this is gonna be the best way to go about actually using it. So you're gonna need to get that MakerBot on the internet. Then you need to go here to makerbot.com uh, cloud print or cloudprint.makerbot.com, something like that. Uh, and it's gonna give you a little sign-in page like here to get onto cloud print and make a, a new account or you can use your, your Google account. Uh, the thing though with that is you're also gonna need to sign into your MakerBot and it doesn't have a sign in with Google button. Uh, it's doable, but you know, it might be a little difficult. All right, so I'll sign in and it's gonna take me to my workspace here. Now you can see my MakerBot is already right here and actually there's a camera inside the MakerBot. It's showing me what's going on right now. Nothing. Um, to get to that point from the MakerBot, follow the uh, little instructions and it'll, it'll guide you on the MakerBot itself as well to, um, to connect to your account to your cloud print account. Once it's connected, you can print right here from your computer. So you're going to need to come over here to the little screen. You're going to connect settings, network, 
and the MakerBot account here. If it didn't show that it was on the internet earlier, then just click that Ethernet and make sure that it's connected. Uh, so you're going to click MakerBot account and then log into account. So how are you going to print? What you need to do first is come over here to start a new print. Now this tool get, can help you to create your own. That's a lesson for another day. I'm not even sure how to do that. Easiest way to do this is going to be finding a file on the internet. And a really great place that I found is called thingiverse.com. Uh, just go to Thingiverse and the normal Thing Thingiverse website is going to look like this. And it's just got tons and tons and tons of stuff. Um, what I decided I wanted to search for was Harry Potter. And after looking through a few of the different uh, options there, I found these cool crests. So I'm going to go ahead and get one of these files. So the first thing it'll show you will be like little details. Okay, it's a crest for each. But what you want is here the thing files. So this one, since there's four different crests, there's four different files. But of course, I want the one for my house, which is the Hufflepuff house. So I'm going to download this STL file. Those are always the files you're looking for. They're STL files. And you know what? I'll go ahead and just put it on my USB here where I've been saving everything. From there... I can now go back to my MakerBot, my cloud print account here, and I'm gonna put add model. And after that, add file. As you see here, I've, I've been looking through a few here. Where's my Hufflepuff? All right, here's my Hufflepuff STL. Gonna open it. Oh, that's bigger than I thought it was. And it's gonna put it right here in the uh, little space there. And now, once it's here, I can press print. And it's going to start preparing it to print. All right, after it thinks for a little while, it's going to then give you a little screen like this. And you press start print. And as you can see, it's getting ready. It's going to do its thing. And you can actually watch it. Um, keep track of it from your computer right here on the little camera there. It's going to continue to, um, it's not like a constant video. It's more like snapshots every, uh, every few seconds or whatnot, but it's going to show you doing its thing. And when it's all done, it'll be on here. Hey, it's done. Like, uh, sit down here on my previous print, uh, that it's finished. It's like a confirm pickup kind of deal. Okay, so now we see it's starting to do its thing. After it heats up, you'll see the little arms inside start moving around. And it's going to go all the way down to the bottom. And it will start the process of building the model. And now it's going to lay out the whole baseline. And there it goes, step by step. I'll check on it a little later. Okay, when it's all done printing, you're gonna see there's a little message here. It says print complete. The build plane extruder may still be hot. This finished overnight, so it's not hot anymore. I'll just press OK. And I'm gonna open this up. Now to get this out, there's you have to pull out the build build plane, and there's a little kind of uh, not button switch, little toggle. Anyway squeeze and just pull and it slides right out and your build's going to be right there on the plate it's going to be pretty stuck and that's why your box also came with uh, a putty knife here so you just kind of carefully work the spatula in between the figure and the plate the build plate and slowly, carefully work it off. There. Lots of cracking sounds. And just like that, it comes up. And I have my Hufflepuff crest. Um, 
your box, uh, your machine also probably came with little uh, uh -huh. pliers here, little wire cutters. Those are just to get off the little, see there's little fuzzy bits here, uh, little hairs uh, left over from the process. You can just use this to cut those off and make it a bit more smooth. So pretty neat and pretty easy. Go ahead and give it a try.